Okay, so we're gonna do colored stones and for now I'm just gonna do a rectangular stone. I'm gonna use this square template to do it and make sure that your pencils are nice and sharp for this. It's kind of important. So I'm gonna start by laying out very lightly my stone. I'm gonna do this side very lightly. And I don't wanna move the template yet because I'm in the process. I want to make sure that I get it right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just move it over because I want it to be rectangular and not square. Now this is this side here is my drop side, my drop shadows. So I'm going to darken that line and I'm going to darken that line. So that's what we have. So I have a drop shadow here and here. We're going to be coming into the middle from the corners. Get our corner facets and then I'm just going to draw a parallel lines so make sure that these lines are straight because when we buy stones they're straight and they're even we don't buy crooked stones so let's make sure that we don't draw crooked stones now I'm just drawing very lightly to start off with and because it's a colored stone in this case I'm doing an amethyst I'm going to make it purple now remember these colored stones are just indicators of our intention. They are not um, the sort of rendering we would do for uh, high-end drawings. Um, so before I start doing any coloring, I'm going to actually take my white and I'm going to draw in a two parallel lines right here. And those are going to be my shimmers. Now the other thing that I can do is um, if I want, I can take my white very lightly, draw in a couple of facets that are leading to the back. And these are just triangles that are leading from the outside edge into the middle. And I'm doing these very lightly. And what this is, is remember we, we talk about tooth of the paper all the time. And these are going to actually fill the tooth with a little bit of white so that we don't have um, we don't have them fill up. Now similar to your black and white versions, you're going to start here and you're going to deepen this corner and you're going to do a transition, shade it out. Remember we can always add color but we can't subtract it. I like to go slightly beyond my highlights with this color. Remember it's possible to have a deeper stone. And you can see here how my white that I laid down first is actually stopping the purple from going over top of it. So this is going to be slightly darker, this one here, it's a little bit of tone. This one here is going to mostly be light. We basically want to make sure that we have a little bit of tone on these because we are, we are putting, you know, it's a colored stone, it's going to be colored across the whole surface. So now I'm going to go in and I'm going to darken this one just a little bit and I'm going to actually crisp this edge up a little bit, sharpen my facets. Deepen this, bring this across. And as I said, transition. Sharpen, oops, sharpen this up. Now I'm going to go back in, oops, with my white. And then I'm going to reassert. Now I could do that with gouache as well, for the reassertion. And essentially, we just want to, you know, this tapers up a little bit here, so it's got to have the taper. 
indicated because it's coming from lower down and up. So it's a small shade there. And for most indicators for most jewelry that we draw, this is enough to tell the client it's a purple amethyst in a setting. Now, if you were doing, uh, if you were gonna do it in a setting, after you've drawn your piece, if this was gonna be in a gold bezel, I would then put my bezel in around it. Now, when you're doing bezels, it's fine just to go around the outside. I would use a ruler for this. If, however, you were doing claws, let's say I was doing claws on this piece here, claws need to actually go over the piece. So they can't just go on the edge, they actually have to go over. If you've drawn your If you've drawn your piece, um, you've finished your stone, like I've done here, what you can do is you can go in, I'm just using the back of the paintbrush right here, and you can white out the area that your claw is going to be in. Just make sure they're the same, properly located. Let that dry, and then I paint on top of that. Uh, with a bezel, you'll just do a parallel line around the outside. That's it. And then you do your other shapes, and you're all good.